Let's bring in Minnesota Republican Congressman and brand new House Majority Whip Tom Emmer. Uh, congratulations, you finally, you guys finally got it done after what? How many days and how many hours? Fifteen rounds. So now today is the hard part, correct? You got to vote on the rules that you agreed to. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Good morning, Brian, and morning. thank you for that. Uh, last week was uh, quite an experience. Today really is. Uh, to me, it, it's not a big deal. The rules, uh, which has not been re widely reported, literally are the rules that our conference voted on after the election with one exception, and that is the motion to vacate is being restored to uh, where it was for 100 years before Nancy Pelosi changed it. That literally is the only change in the rules that our members will vote on tonight. Okay, uh, so Mr. Whip, is Mr. Whip the correct title <laughs> we should use with you? Congressman right. Whip. Just getting used to it. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that the right term? I, I think so. Okay. I, I like Tom, but uh, <laughs> Whip. I, I like Mr. Whip. Uh, so, so, Mr. Uh, Whip, we understand that at least two congressmen on the Republican side, um, you've got Tom, uh, Tony Gonzalez and Nancy Mace have both said publicly they will not vote for the rules package. The rules package is a 55-page document, and according to Punchbowl, there is also a secret three-page addendum that Mr. McCarthy and his allies hashed out during several days of the negotiations. Is that true? Are there three pages of stuff we'll not know about? And if so, generally, you won't tell us what's in it, but generally, what's it about? Yeah, no, the first off, the rules for Tony and uh, Nancy, uh, Tony has said he's not uh, willing to vote for them yet. Uh, Nancy, on the other hand, has said she's on the fence. Uh, part of the thing that needs to be understood is these separate items that you're talking about, which I would argue has been mischaracterized, not unusual for a, uh, a local media outlet here on the Hill. Uh, the rules themselves, I, I do believe both Tony and Nancy will uh, come around tonight when they realize the things that they want to talk about are in this uh, separate agreement. And specifically, uh, my understanding is Tony wants to talk about a provision that says we're going to start with the FY22 budget as the baseline. Uh, and this is a concern because you got uh, in the uh, in the spending uh, approach, you've got the discretionary spending that involves both this out of control domestic spending since before the pandemic under Nancy Pelosi, uh, and you've got uh, defense spending. And the argument is this would affect defense spending, which I'm here to tell you guys, Republicans will not impact defense spending aside from efficiencies and waste. Uh, it's the domestic spending that we're going to go after. Yeah, some of the moderates, I know Republicans are worried about how some of the moderates are going to vote for some of these rules. I know members would get 72 hours to read the bills before they vote. You talked about the... The term, well, you talked about only takes one person to vote the speaker out or to start that vote at least. And then the term limits. Nancy Mace was on one of the Sunday shows and she said she's worried about these backroom deals. She's not sure what kind of deals were made in exchange for a vote for McCarthy. Byron Donalds was, was on television and he revealed, it sounds like he's revealing, that he got the House Steering Committee in exchange for his vote for McCarthy. Listen to this. You're going to be a part of the Republican Steering Committee as Kevin McCarthy's designates. And part of that is going to be to make sure that the entire conference, you know, the, the ideological spectrum, if you will, is represented through all committees. And I think this is important because what I've seen in my first two years in Washington is this, and this is actually not Kevin's fault. This is the, the, the nature and the, the culture of Washington, D.C., is that the members are actually really uh, 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 separated from each other. They don't really get a chance to talk a lot and engage a lot unless they take specific interest to do. I think having more voices on more committees is actually going to help the Republican conference and Congress overall so we can clear up a lot of the misconceptions about policy ideas and, and, and political points so we can actually do the right thing by the American people through a truly deliberative process that is open and there's a lot of conversations going on. I think it's a great thing. Congressman, your reaction? Well, first off, we've got to be careful not to conflate the rules and this discussion that took place with these points that I'm going to argue to you, Ainsley, uh, 
all of our members are going to support. There's no backroom deals. First on the rules, you're opening up the Capitol for the first time since the pandemic to the public. You're eliminating proxy voting and making people come to work. They haven't right. been doing it for years. Uh, you're reinstating the Holman rule, which is going to allow members to literally uh, do targeted spending cuts within uh, these huge bills, and you're eliminating the opportunity for these $1.7 trillion uh, Christmas tree laden ornament mm -hmm. uh, bills. Uh, on the other mm -hmm. side, you're, uh, the agreement that you will know more about, uh, our members have been learning about it at reg real time as right. we go through. Uh, not all of them chose to be part of this, but they will now. Uh, you're going to have single subject matter. Uh, you're going to have germaneness. What does that mean, Ainsley? Well, in the past, the House might pass a ceremonial coin bill for a famous American mm -hmm. who did something important, send it over to the Senate. It sits there without action. And then guess what? They strip out that language. They put in a $1.7 trillion spending bill, and they send it back as mm. the coin bill. That will not happen anymore. We're going to hold the Senate accountable. We're going to hold mm. the House accountable. We're going to do what the American people expect. Let's see if you guys do get along, because yesterday Nancy Mace called Matt Gates a fraud. Every time he voted against Kevin McCarthy, he sent out a fundraising letter. You guys got some uh, open wounds that need some uh, back teen. It's all good, Brian. Human beings got to learn to get along together. Right. They do. And Just don't grab them by the neck. Before you go, <laughs> Mr. Whip, uh, what, do you have any idea what Kevin McCarthy said to Matt Gates in that very seemingly tense moment that got Matt Gates to vote for this? For I him. do. Present. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, he and, he and uh, Matt were having a discussion that I'm going to leave between them. If they want to disclose those, uh, what they talked about, I'll let them do that, Brian. Uh, or, uh, right. But he Steve. only voted present, right? Yeah, he voted present. He never That's voted right. for him. Right. That's he right. said we had a deal. He said we had a deal. Give us a hint. Just give us a little. <clears throat> <clears throat> They're learning how to get along. Okay, good enough. We'll what, was find the, out. what was the reason he didn't vote for him? Because he said on Sean Hannity's show the night before, he kind of implied that, that he was going to vote for him that night. Yeah. And then he also said, what more? What was the phrase? He said, what more can I ask for? He's he goes, us everything. Yeah, he goes, I'm, I'm out of things to ask for. Look, guys, like every member of the Republican conference, the 222, everybody wants to have their voice heard. And Kevin McCarthy's job, the leadership's job, yeah. is to make sure that that happens. And right. that's what that was about. We heard a lot of voices for 15 rounds. All right. Fantastic, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Whip. Tom. Uh, I'll call you Tom. Good luck. Good. Right. <laughs> Take care, guys.